Despite the drama of shark-infested reefs and killer birds, in Galapagos, it's reptiles that steal the show. Huge lizards roam, but even they start out small, and these islands can be a dangerous place to grow up. Few places on Earth show how animals can adapt to a challenging world, where only the fittest survive. For over 50 years, survival has captured spectacular images of the natural world. Now we use the very best to bring you stories of animals as they could occur in the wild. The giant reptiles of Galapagos, like most of the other creatures here, are found nowhere else on Earth and are uniquely adapted to their barren and remote island home. All these inhabitants have been isolated from the mainland for thousands of years and have become perfectly adapted to the harsh conditions. The vast range of species evolved over a relatively short time to fill every available niche, inspiring Darwin's theory of evolution. The rocks are ruled by giant reptiles, the seas by predatory seals, and the skies by a multitude of dramatic and sometimes deadly birds. Perhaps it's not surprising that the Galapagos inspired the concept of the survival of the fittest. Great reptiles patrol a misty volcanic crater. This harsh environment is their breeding ground and nursery. Not a scene from the Jurassic, this is everyday life in the weird and wonderful Galapagos Islands. Male iguanas bob their yellow heads in display. Though the females lead them a merry dance, this is the time of courtship. Though these land iguanas favor the parched volcano slopes, they have cousins that patrol the coast, marine iguanas. Here, they are also preparing to breed, some of the males even flushing an angry red to intimidate rivals. They bob their heads to deter rivals from encroaching on their rocky territory and chase off lesser males from their miniature kingdoms. When a worthy rival is encountered, the reptiles go head to head. By displaying their prowess, the males hope to attract a mate and for a lucky few, the fights pay off. Once the posturing males have calmed down, both the female marine and land iguanas seek undisturbed patches of soft soil, where they can dig a nest into which they'll lay their eggs. All across the island chain, the breeding season is in full swing. Magnificent frigate birds have built-in balloons, throat pouches that the males spend 20 minutes inflating in order to impress a mate. The males will squabble with one another, risky business with such delicate apparatus. He then shakes his booty at the female. If his dance moves don't win her over, 
you might be left feeling a little deflated. An equatorial island might not be the most obvious place to find a penguin, but the beaches are home to a unique Galapagos species, and here too the males are displaying to the females. So their serenade is something of an acquired taste. The caterwauling upsets the neighbours. Cormorants and penguins live beak to beak on these small patches of rock, so neighbourly disputes are common. Like the penguins, Galapagos cormorants have abandoned the ability to fly. There are few large predators on land here. They no longer need flight to escape. Their stunted wings instead have become tatty and more or less redundant. Even underwater, the wings remain tucked at the bird's side. It relies entirely on its webbed flipper-like feet for propulsion. But they have developed great grace in the water and have incorporated their elegance into a courtship dance that rivals any synchronized swim team. At first, the smaller female leads the male on a wild goose chase. She's checking that he's got stamina to see her through the breeding season. If he can't catch her, he certainly can't catch fish for her family. If she's impressed, she gradually starts mimicking his neck postures, which, despite the pounding waves, become gradually more and more synchronized. The male suggests moving this dance onto the shore. Though it means squeezing past sea lions, the beach bounces. The complex ballet allows for the pair to scout out potential nest sites. And they return to the waves for the final act, a spiral dance that will seal the deal. At first glance, craggy lava rocks don't look like prime real estate for first-time buyers. But it's a great neighbourhood. There's a treasure trove beneath the waves. Though it's located on the equator, the Galapagos archipelago is bathed by the Peru current that brings cold, nutrient-rich waters from the Antarctic. Amid the mass of colourful fish, another reptile has conquered the seas. Male green turtles with their long tails patrol the reef in search of females. The reptiles mate underwater, and soon the females will use the island's sheltered shores to dig chambers in which to lay their eggs. They are just one rare species that thrives around Galapagos. The seas are teeming with fish, and they in turn feed a multitude of predators, from tuna and hammerhead sharks to gigantic sperm whales. These leviathans are the largest toothed animals on Earth, diving into the deep seas around the islands where they can feast on squid. but it's the smaller marine mammals that steal the show. Noisy, curious and boisterous Galapagos sea lions dart through the surf. They 
herd fish, working together to round up the shoals, making them easier to pick off. They create a feeding opportunity for the birds above. Brown pelicans dive into the shoals, or just scoop their pouches at the surface to pick off bait fish. Blue-footed boobies form squadrons of dive bombers, dropping at great speed into the waves to hunt. Before long, a feeding frenzy is underway. <laughs> Bellies full, the boobies return to the colony. In the mating game, these comical birds are the real dandies. They will do everything they can to show off their striking blue feet. Knowing how to make an entrance, they fly in with their feet skyward so that no one misses their act. And then high step to their partners. These well choreographed moves help cement a close bond between the pairs, readying them for the challenges of raising a family. For the many thousands of seabirds coming and going from their new nests, the greatest threat comes in the form of aerial attack. The magnificent frigate bird is a pirate of the skies. With their cumbersome pouches deflated, they become agile fighter pilots, among the most skillful flyers in the bird world, and with the longest wings in relation to their bodies. They can nip and dive to catch fish for themselves, but they have found an easier option, to steal. The wildlife of Galapagos better beware. After filling their crops with fish, seabirds rush back to their nests. But first, they must run a gauntlet. The pirates are ready to strike. Kings of the wing, the frigate birds begin a well-orchestrated dogfight. Attacking other seabirds, trying to panic them into jettisoning their catch, which the frigates then steal. Only the most determined make it back to their nests with their hard-earned meal. The thieving frigates take the stolen goods to their nest mates. While the few tropic birds that get past the front line return to their nests tucked into crevices in the lava. The tropic birds are among the most beautiful, but they don't have elegant personalities to match. 
Good nest sites are in short demand. Competition runs high. To avoid the dangers from above, a few seabirds have taken to nesting underground. Several species of petrel, tiny relatives of the albatross, use these dens, ferrying food from the sea to their fuzzy grey subterranean chicks. But getting in and out of the den gives opportunity to yet another island hunter. Galapagos short-eared owls hunt mostly by day and the sparrow-sized storm petrels are perfect prey. Storm petrels are the most abundant seabirds in the world. Most will escape the owl's talons. All across the bird world, partners bring food back to their mates, Soon they will need to ferry huge quantities of fish home, just as soon as their eggs hatch. Among the most dedicated parents are the elegant waved albatrosses. These birds have spent a year circling the Pacific Ocean on seven-foot wings, but now they return to breed. They pair for life, and each season perform their elaborate bill-tapping courtship to reaffirm their bonds. It's a bit like renewing their wedding vows. This couple will be faithful to each other for their entire lives, a pairing that could last 40 years. Like other seabirds that cling to the cliffs, albatrosses need open nest sites, the clearing to act as a runway strip for takeoff and landing for their massive wings. A single egg is laid on a very simple mound of vegetation. Both birds are active parents and take turns sitting for the two months it takes the egg to hatch. When off duty, the birds head off to feed. The beach offers an ideal takeoff pad. Such heavy birds need a good run up before getting airborne. There are sometimes disputes as to who's next in the runway queue. No one wants to spend too long taxiing. Albatross are in it for the long haul. It will take nine months of dedicated care to get from egg to a chick that's old enough to fly the nest. The parents will fly 60 miles or more away from the nest in search of food and return to regurgitate a rich fish soup for the youngster, up to four pounds in each sitting. The albatross's tiny neighbors, mockingbirds, are so cocky that they'll even try and sneak a snack directly from the mother albatross. The chicks are supersized by the fatty food and can barely waddle around the nest. Some birds are slow starters. The male cormorant is still trying to persuade the female to settle down. He has started bringing presents, carefully diving and picking out the perfect gift. Rather than a bunch of flowers, it's a tatty beak full of seaweed. But it's enticing for her. The first stage in decorating a nursery has begun. The remote ashy slopes of an active volcano have nurtured one small clutch of eggs. And now, after 90 days, they are ready to hatch. These are the eggs laid by the female land iguana. The tiny lizards gradually wriggle their way free of the shells, their stomachs bloated from absorbing the egg yolk. 
This huge first meal will set them up for a few days while they find their feet. Though small enough to curl up in an egg cup, the babies are already self-sufficient and ready to fend for themselves, miniature versions of their meter-long mother. The female's parental role was over as soon as the eggs were buried, and she now treks 10 kilometers back to her preferred feeding grounds in the valleys below. From now on, the babies are on their own. Close cousins, the marine iguana babies, have also emerged, but they've been born into a dangerous world. Mockingbirds check their nest holes, looking to pick off stragglers or exposed eggs. Some fall to Dromachus, a tiny Galapagos snake. It will only be a few months before the babies are too big to be threatened by this pipe cleaner of a predator, but it takes its fill while it can. And then, of course, there is always a killer bird waiting in the wings. A young Galapagos hawk has just killed a baby iguana, but now two adult hawks want their share. These buzzard-like birds take a heavy toll on the iguana hatchlings. Each adult pair is highly territorial, so the youngster's in for a rough ride. They are nesting, so every meal counts. But the young iguanas that make it from their nests now begin a life on the cliffs. Here, colonies of thousands gather to bask and feed. The tiny babies will now have to contend with a host of annoying neighbors, including large red crabs. A larva heron could represent a real threat to the smallest of iguanas, but this one's preoccupied with crab hunting, looking for any individuals that have recently shed their shells, making them easier to swallow. Despite the heron's beady eyes, the crabs still rather risk life on the rocks than underwater. In fact, they're almost hydrophobic. There are so many hungry eyes beneath the surface that the crabs do their best to stay above it, leaping the puddles. This water dance earned their name, Sally Lightfoot Crabs. The land-loving crustaceans play the role of waste removal, hoovering up any bits of detritus they find on the rocks. The carcasses of iguanas are quickly found and picked clean. Marine iguanas are unique. They spend the early morning huddled on the rocks to warm up, but soon descend to the tidal zone. They feed entirely on algae and use their spade-shaped teeth to rasp seaweed from the rocks. At low tide, they can be seen grazing on the exposed weed alongside aquatic animals like foraging octopus. But most of their feeding actually takes place beneath the waves. Under the shadows of passing sea lions, these extraordinary reptiles graze, using their needle-like claws to grip the slippery rocks, fighting against the churning seas. They are strong swimmers, and large lizards will paddle their way up to half a mile out to sea and dive down 45 feet or more. The young lizards stay closer to the surf, but even they can hold their breath for half an hour to feed. It's a dangerous game to play. The iguanas are cold-blooded and the sea saps their energy. If they stay down too long, they'll become immobilized by cold and could drown. So every few hours, they paddle back to shore with their flat, muscly tails and climb the rocks to sunbathe. The colder reptiles turn their skin darker to absorb more heat. Once their batteries are recharged, they descend and start all over again. One of 
their strangest adaptations to a marine lifestyle is their technique for dealing with excess salt. While munching their way through seaweed, they ingest dangerously large quantities of salt. But they have a trick. Glands extract the mineral and it's ejected by nose. Salty sneezing erupts all over the colony. But the iguanas' sneezes cause much less disturbance than the behavior of their near neighbors. This is where the sea lions haul out to rest and warm up. Though graceful in the water, they clumsily waddle over rocks or resting iguanas. colony is currently a blubbery battleground. The huge 800-pound bulls are three times the size of the females and draw and rumble to intimidate rivals. Their aim is to secure an attractive stretch of beach. female likes their patch, then she might move in and allow him to father her pups. It can be a raucous affair, and woe betide anyone that stands in their way. The females choose quieter spots away from the hormone-fueled bulls to give birth. This mother has produced exceptionally rare twins and nervously checks and cleans the newborns the pesky mockingbirds are back. They're only looking for scraps of afterbirth, but their noisy flocks are enough to unsettle the mother. Sea lions that have left their mothers but are too young to breed themselves have a sort of sea lion flop house, a teenage hangout away from the overpowering males. The youngsters play in the waves, even body surfing. They can't resist harassing the locals. And if it's not cold iguanas trying to get back to the rocks, then it's seabirds. Even the biggest pelicans become objects of fun. But this beach party has attracted some unwanted guests. Sharks abound in the waters of the Galapagos. The larger species hug the shoreline at this time of year, knowing that young, inexperienced seal pups will be taking the plunge. Even the adult sea lions are jumpy. The shark's jaws are big enough to inflict some serious damage. This adult female will never forget her encounter. It cost her her flippers. She was lucky to escape with her life. To protect themselves and their colony, some of the bigger males start to mob the marauding shark, tormenting the predatory fish until it finally retreats back to the reef.
the heroic bulls return to bask in their victory. There is no shortage of food for sharks in the Galapagos. By working together, they are able to drive a shoal of needlefish against the rocks, making them easier to pick off. 20 or more reef sharks hound the panic-stricken fish. In desperation to escape the jaws, they throw themselves ashore, but to avoid suffocation, they'll need to wriggle back in and take their chances. It's never safe to go back in the water. Fish that have been driven in shore also become easy targets for the lava heron. As the tide recedes, frightened mullets are trapped. They are sitting ducks. For the heron, this is an all-you-can-eat buffet. Back on the shoreline, colony life has calmed down. Iguanas are managing to stay out from under their heavyweight neighbors. The seals squabble for the best sun lounges where they can soak up the heat. A yellow warbler picks among the bathers looking for flies. Now that the sharks have backed off, a mother seal leads her newborn for its first swim. There is risk in bathing, but at least it will get them away from the annoying mockingbirds. To give her infant the best protection she can, the mother chooses a large rock pool, an enclosed swimming area for mothers and toddlers. Slightly older pups that have already found their sea legs can play in safety. They are the terrors of the beach. Anything they can find becomes a toy. A sea urchin has been collected from the rock pool for closer investigation. And the newborn is now feeling confident enough to chase the crabs, which are doing their best to stay dry. And of course, the favorite toy, iguanas beware. A lazy afternoon descends on the colony, but something strange is happening in their midst. The sand erupts. After 12 weeks baking underground, the turtle eggs are ready to hatch. Turtles often hatch under the cover of darkness. These are a bit premature and now face the ultimate obstacle course. From the moment they leave their eggs, the baby turtles know instinctively to head for the water, but this will be the most dangerous few minutes of their lives. Beady bird eyes are quick to spot the movement. With pickaxe beaks, the mockingbirds begin a turtle massacre. With mockingbirds closing in, the tiny reptiles must tackle the mountain of sea mammals. Luckily, the bleary-eyed seals are too sleepy to pay them much attention. But their struggle isn't over. Now the pirates arrive. Frigate birds never miss out on an easy meal. With their incredible mastery of the air, these are the red arrows of the bird world and skillfully pluck turtles from the beach. The hawk's not as agile, but seizes the turtles in its powerful talons.
Though the sea contains plenty of predators, the tiny turtles are adept swimmers, and once they reach the waves, their chances of survival increase. The islands support an army of small predators, but some of the many fauna can be quite useful to their larger neighbors. As the young iguanas grow, they must regularly shed their skin. The constant skin replacement helps prevent a buildup of parasites, but the dead skin can be itchy. When they clamber from the waves, little helpers are ready to tidy up. A ground finch picks off parasites from the loose scales. It's a day at the salon for cold and itchy iguanas. And a larva lizard nibbles off the sloughed skin. Up in the highlands, little lizards also accompany the marine iguana's cousins. The larva lizard is helping to remove irritating flies. It's quite safe. Land iguanas are also harmless vegetarians. In fact, they are particularly skilled in finding and dealing with tough desert plants. The main food source inland is the moisture-laden cactus, but to enjoy the flesh, the lizards must deal with their well-armored leaves. Some are snatched directly from the plant, but others are given a roll to snap off the needles. The land iguana also makes the most of its smaller neighbors. When suffering with dry, itchy skin, they solicit a makeover. By arching their backs, they let ground finches know it's okay to come and feed. At first glance, Galapagos finches seem cute and even helpful inhabitants, but there is one that isn't such a welcome attendant. Watch out for the vampire finch. Food and drink are hard to come by on the Galapagos Islands. So one small group of finch colonizers has discovered a unique way of getting the nutrients they need, but it's at a cost to their neighbors. Many of the larger species allow small birds to groom them. A parasite removing service is always welcome, but if you're not careful, these entrepreneurs will bleed you dry. Masked boobies casually tolerate grooming services Little do they know that this treatment is more than just skin deep. The finches discovered that if you peck at the base of a bird's flight feathers, it's easy to draw blood. Now the little savages routinely open a vein and drink their fill. It's gruesome, but also inventive. The animals of the Galapagos were challenged by a tough environment and have managed to find some unique survival skills to get them through. All of the finches in the island chain are closely related. They came from a single ancestor, the mainland ground finch. But they have become so diverse in appearance and feeding habits that they gave rise to one of the greatest theories of science. By studying the finches, Darwin developed his origin of species. Some of the ground finches have stout seed-cracking bills, while others have delicate beaks like a robin for gathering small insects. One of the most extreme specializations is that of the woodpecker finch. There are no woodpeckers on the islands, so finches have evolved to take their place. Their aim is to find and extract insect larvae from under the bark of trees. The grubs are sometimes out of reach, so the birds have become one of very few animals to use and even make tools. The finch spots a twig of suitable size, snaps it off and uses it as a probe to wiggle their prey towards them. The 
The next grub is heard gnawing within the tree. It's a big beetle larva, a worthy prize. So the bird goes about selecting an ideal fishing rod. The first is too short, so it has another go. It takes a change of tack and picks a slightly curved twig from the forest floor. This may be better for prizing the beetle out. These bird-brained finches have managed to exploit almost every resource on the island, often at the expense of larger species. Once again, the booby colony is under attack. It's dangerous for a booby bird to turn its back. A rather enterprising little bird has found a great source of takeaway food. It rolls eggs over the rocks until finally the shell gives. It's hard work, but worth the effort. Egg yolk is one of the richest sources of nutrition, even if it's scrambled. Baby boobies have a hard life. The ones that escape the egg thieves still have to contend with their nest mates. Boobies prefer to have only one chick. It will keep both parents busy as it is, but they lay a second egg just in case anything happens to the first, a plan B. If both eggs are healthy and hatch, the older of the two chicks will kick its little brother or sister out of the nest. The tiny runt is doomed. The predatory birds of the Galapagos strike again. It's a race between mockingbirds and the frigate. Who will be bold enough to snatch the baby from under its mother's bill? Of course, hundreds of babies from the seabird colonies do survive the onslaught and will join their parents in the feasting flocks. Though bird life abounds, the Galapagos truly belongs to the reptiles. Green turtles and grazing iguanas get pretty big, but further inland live true giants. Nobody knows how tortoises first came to the islands. They are fond of bathing and coating their skins with mud that can protect against biting insects. But this one animal may have made a wrong move. Carried by the current, he soon finds himself ditched into the sea to begin the long climb back up. This is perhaps how small tortoises from South America got here, carried by the sea. But once they arrived, they seized an opportunity and became truly giant. The four-foot heavyweights can reach over 600 pounds, equivalent to a modest cow. 
mating ritual of these ancient giants has to be among the most awkward and potentially crushing of all. Wheezing and groaning, the much bigger males mount the females in their noisy courtship. After mating, the females lay around a dozen golf ball-like eggs in underground chambers. Four months later, tiny baby tortoises emerge. These miniatures are just two inches long. If they can avoid the many predatory birds, these tiny babies will be able to fend for themselves and provide hope for a future generation of a rare species. They won't be ready to breed themselves for another 20 years, and some may live for well over a century. After decades of hunting, the giant tortoises and other unique animals of the Galapagos are now protected. In the lush valleys, reptiles rule, the giants munching peacefully in the lush vegetation. And in the shrubs above them, a group of small lizards feed. These are the young land iguanas. They have grown, but still retain their dark camouflage. Gradually, they're getting old enough to leave the safety of the trees and begin their adult lives. These healthy youngsters prove that despite the stack of odds in this land of predators, the dramatic and unique wildlife of Galapagos can flourish. The fittest can and do survive.